Welcome back Arcadians. Alex here with another video. How you all doing guys? <laughs> this is the museum update video, my first. So in this video we are going to look at the games I've been picking up, some really cool arcade machines that we've got coming into the museum and also what I've been doing in their building wise. But before we get into that I want to say a huge thank you to all the people that commented on the last video and wished us the best of luck with, with this uh, museum. My old subscribers that have been me, with me for nine years and also new ones that have come over from Neil's channel. I hope there's something in this channel for you guys. If you love retro games, arcade games, you're gonna love this because that's my passion. I absolutely love it and this is what I love doing. So all these videos are all related to this kind of stuff. So if you like that, you're in the right place. So thank you so much, it's, it really is appreciated. Um, so before we get into uh, the museum and what I've been picking up, I want to just ask you guys what you would like to see in the museum because I've got my taste, Neil Richard have got their taste, I'm an old git, I like the old stuff. <laughs> well I do like the new stuff as well, um, you know I do like it, but as, when it comes to dedicated machines it's a particular taste that I have. Um, and, and everyone's different. So I would like to know what you would like to see in there. Obviously we're not gonna have any dance games in there. It's, it's not that kind of space. You know, we're trying to tell the story um, of the beginning of video game history right away through to sort of the decline when it dropped off, um, just before Street Fighter, you know, and then when Jammer came about, tell that story. So that's what we're trying to achieve. So there won't be any Game nine, sort of 2,000 games, dance games and gun games and things like that. But anything before that, let us know. What do you want to see? Sega Rally? Do you want to see an Outrun? Do you want to see a Gorf? Do you want to see a, a Sea Wolf? What games would you like to see in the museum? Because it's not a huge space, but it's enough space for us to tell a story and we can rotate the games. So my idea is, you know, every few months, I'll have this as an overflow arcade. Also, we've got the barn, which I'm gonna show you later in the video. We can swap games around, so keep it fresh. So every three months you come back, there'd be something different for you to play. But I wanna know also what PCBs you would like to see in there. What Neo Geo MVS games you would like to see in there. Because my idea is when you walk in, the, the first thing you'll see is my YouTube studio room, which, which is where I'll be presenting my videos from in the future. But also, it's gonna be an arcade archive. So I'm gonna archive manuals, marquees, everything to do with the coin-up era of that time. Also, all of the MVS games, all the PCB uh, uh, games will be in there for you to see. And they'll be labeled, so you'll be able to come in there and see games that you might have not played for years. You can come up to me and say, Alex, can I play this? And we can put it in the Jammer Cab for you to play. So not only would be my games in there, but also your games that you've donated, you've loaned to the museum, you'll be able to play. It's your museum. That's the goal with this. You know, it's a community thing. Because um, I love doing it. You know, I love doing this. I've done retro events, I've done revival, and I've thoroughly enjoyed chatting to you guys. And that's, this is an opportunity to do it all over again every weekend. Chat about games. So. It'd be great to hear your stories on the games and why you want to pick those games. So let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. So what games I've been picking up. So before we get to the museum, I've been picking up a few Neo Geo MVS carts. Alan, thank you so much for doing me a great deal with this. This is a cyber, this is Cyberlip and it comes with a shot box. So I had to get this. This will be displayed in the museum. So if you want to play Cyberlip, just come up to me. I can take this off the shelf and I can put it in the NVS Lords of Arrow machine. You can play Cyberlip. Brilliant game. Not as good as Contra. You know, you can't shoot diagonally, but some fantastic end of level bosses. And I love the way you can traverse through the levels. You can pick which level you want to get off at. And um, it's got an ammo room. You can upgrade your ammo, your guns, and stuff. And it's just a cool game. Really cool game. That's Cyberlip. That would be in the museum. Also, I've got a copy of Zen Zenkuku. I think that's how you pronounce it. I think there's three in this series. Number two being the best, and number three being the most expensive. So I've got, naturally, I've got number one. <laughs> 
But it's still supposed to be a good game. I think I played a version of this on the Super Nintendo. It was quite good. Um, yeah, that's a cool game. Also, I've got some Neo Geo MVS carts that have been downloaded by OG Duffy, Samurai Showdown, and Ninja Combat. Two more games for the museum. Also, some PCBs here, again by OG Duffy, Double Dragon. I know this is one of Neil's favourite games, and Dean from the Retro Asylum podcast. Go and check that podcast out. Brilliant podcast. Dean, it's in the museum, mate. You can come and play it. Double Dragon. We've got, I don't know, there's a few odd ones here, like, um, uh, which one's this? Oh, this is actually a good one. This is um, Giga Wing. Really cool vertical shooter that I've been playing on the Switch. So it's really nice to get the PCB of that game. Really nice shooter. We've got World Cup 90. Any football fans out there? <laughs> um, we've got a WrestleFest. And I don't know what that one is. I haven't played that one yet. So, yeah, some cool PCBs already, which I will be taking over to the museum. Once I've got all my shelving in there, I'm going to label each one so you can see what all the PCBs are. Or put them in boxes, possibly, with a label on it so you can see a bit of the artwork. Um, all my Neo Geo MVS carts will be going over there for you to play. They're all labelled. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we'll have a... A nice archive of games when you walk in. That's that's the goal. That's my achievement. So that's that bit. Let's get over to the museum. I've got to get this Ghost and Goblins cabinet that Harry's loaned us. Thank you so much for that, Harry. We're going to revisit Harry's collection because um, I know a lot of people like those electrical mechanical games. I do. He's going to give us a proper tour of that very soon on this channel, so look out for that. But... For now, we've got to get this Ghosts and Goblins over to the museum, and then I'm going to give you a tour of the museum and the games I've been picking up. So let's get this in the van and head over to the museum. So this is my little storage area guys. This is where I've been storing a few of my cabinets while the work's going on in the museum. And as you can see, I brought my Space Invaders over and I picked up a beautiful example of a Tempest, Atari Tempest, one of the first color vector games. And it is one of my top 10 games. I absolutely love this game. 
and the artwork on here is to die for. <laughs> it really is. I'd have a tattoo of this. This is my tattoo, my first tattoo. I'm gonna have this done. It is so cool. <laughs> but it is a stunning cabaret. I know a lot of people like the cabaret version, but for me, it's the upright all the way. It's, it's a striking cabinet because of the angle of it. Absolutely beautiful. And on its own, you know, with no cabs rammed up against it, it is gonna look, it's just gonna pop. It really is. Love the marquee. It's starting to peel here, but I've got new artwork for this, which we'll do a video on once we get it in the museum. I'll put new artwork on here. Control panel's okay. I, think it's, I don't think there's anything wrong with the control panel, but it's beautiful. There's a spinner. That's all working, good to go. So really happy to get that. And of course, my Space Invaders I've brought over. One of my favorite cabinets. Got to have a Space Invaders, guys. For me, it is the game. <laughs> it really is, that started it all. And then over here, we've got a very rare game, Sprint 2, which I've picked up. Um, this, is, this has got a lot of history, this game. This is one of the first games that had um, artificial intelligence for the other cars. Before this, you had like Grand Track by Atari, which was just a single car going around a track against a timer. Whereas this, you could play two players against other cars on the track and they had their own intelligence. So this game has a lot of historical significance and it's great for the museum. The only problem is the side art here, it's been painted over, but I'm hoping we can rub this back you can just see a bit of the artwork coming through here. If I can rub this black back, we might just get to the original side art, which would be really cool. This doesn't work. This needs a lot of restoration, but I'm hoping we can do that. And the interesting thing, this is by Key Games, which was a company set up by Atari <laughs> to make more games because they couldn't get enough games into the market. Um, you know, back then it was a different situation you had a certain amount of distributors that you could sell to. And, you know, this is just about when the, the market was starting to hit off. It was starting to get more popular and they wanted to make more games and get more games in the market. So they set up this secret company called Key Games and pretended it was a competitor against Atari. But even though they were using Atari programmers to make these games, slightly different than Atari games, but they set this company up as a sort of sly move to get more games into the market. Very interesting. And I'll show you in the back here, because this is really interesting. I'm going to pull that PCB out in a minute. Look at the size of this cabinet. It's huge. It's got Atari on the back. <laughs> even though they're trying to keep this a secret, they've got Atari on the back. And even on the board, on the PCB, if I pull this out, it's really dusty. You might just be able to see Atari on here somewhere. It's really dark. But yeah, there's there's the Atari, Atari sign, or logo rather. But yeah, there's a lot of work to do in this. It really is, it doesn't work. It needs a lot of cleaning up. There's a lot of dust in there. But for the museum, this is absolutely great. So this is what we're going for, guys. We're gonna try and tell a story with a few black and white games then into colour with Galaxian, and then we move through the, the classic 80s era onto Jammer. And then really, the arcade started to decline, didn't they? Towards the end of the 80s, early 90s, you know, when the console market started to really sort of uh, establish itself as the main place to play, play sort of arcade ports, you know, on the Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, the graphics on those machines were, were the equivalent of the arcade game. So, Kids like me that grew up with these arcade games no longer needed to go down the arcade because we had it all at home. And so that's the story we're going to tell right up to that point when it started to decline. So that's this, this, this little room. I'm going to be bringing more cabs in here. And now I'm going to give you a tour of the main room, the main museum. So I've got ghosts and goblins in the museum, guys. And now I'm going to take you through the doorway, the entrance where you'll be greeted by me when you come to the museum. And this will be basically my YouTube studio. <laughs> a whole room where I can do my videos from. 
videos where I'll be putting side art on machines, um, restoring the machines, gameplays, you name it, it'll all be done in here and in the other room as well, but this will be my main room. And hopefully archive a lot of the PCBs and MDS carts in here as well. Anything to do with the coin-up era of that time, marquees, uh, manuals, hopefully I'm gonna restore all of that in here, archive it all in here which would be really nice. So it's quite a nice size room. We're gonna have a false wall across this back here to block out these windows and that'll be clad with timber. And on front of that, hopefully our logo and neon lights. So just to give you an idea of what's happening in here, the ceiling's gonna be painted black, the floor is gonna be black, the walls are gonna be white. And once you've got the cabinets in here, you can put lighting behind it so you get different colours in the room. It gives it that warm, atmospheric feel, which is what you want. So we want an arcade feel, but also we need a kind of museum feel as well. So we're trying to get that balance. But we've been playing around the lighting. So we've got ghosts and goblins in here. And we've just been playing around the lighting just to see what happens. And it looks really nice. So if we turn the light off, it looks really cool, doesn't it? And you can have different colours of lighting sort of bleeding into each other, which is going to look really good. So maybe Ghosts and Goblins will have a green light behind there, which will look nice. And I've brought this along. We managed to pick up an Atari Star Wars 1983 Color Vector game. Absolute classic. Loads of nostalgia for lots of people. Absolutely amazing game. Um, never thought we'd get this from the museum, especially in this condition. It is unbelievable. The only thing I would say, it's got a little bit of a cracking along here, but you know, it's all part of the history and patina of the game. The side art is just incredible. I had to check online actually, just to see how good it was. And it, it's amazing because usually the red goes when it's been in, in sunlight, red's the first colour that goes. But it's still there, it looks like it's been hand drawn. Absolutely beautiful. And we worked out, <laughs> we worked out the other day, roughly, by looking at the, how many uh, coins this is having. It's going 40, 40,000 plates, 25 cents, which is roughly around 250 grand this made back in the day. Incredible. Not sure how much it took to, to put together or make this game, but 250 grand is pretty damn good. <laughs> and I know this was a pretty popular game, especially the, the cockpit version. So this will be here for all you guys to play, which is amazing. So let's take you into the arcade. So this is the YouTube room, we've seen that. This is gonna be the arcade, so through this door. And then we're gonna do something with this door, we're not quite sure yet but we want it sort of welcoming you into this room because this is where is all, all the games are going to be. But as you can see, I've been painting the ceiling and I've got to finish this off today. I've got to carry on finishing this side of the ceiling. These lights are going, but all the lighting in here is going to change. We've got an electrician coming in next week, putting more sockets in here. The air comes in, so it's going to be nice and warm in here in the winter and cool in here in the summer. So it's a nice dry room for all the machines. We've stripped that wall from all the paint because we thought it'd be nice to have a feature wall. You know, just to see that nice stone, Cotswold stone, just to sort of change things around a bit. But the walls are all gonna be white because once you've got the color lighting behind the cabinet, it doesn't matter what color the walls are because the lighting is gonna be the color of the walls. And the floor is gonna be black um, resin, so black ceiling, black resin floor, all these cabs in there, it's gonna look amazing. <laughs> it really is gonna look amazing. With all my games in here, all the games that me and Richard have brought, and all the games that you guys in the community have loaned to us are gonna be here. It's gonna be your space. It is gonna be absolutely amazing. So there we go guys, that's where we're at with the museum. I'll be trying to do updates every week if possible. Um, we've got a lot going on next week, got the uh, electrician coming in and I'll be doing more painting, got to paint those walls. So 
plenty more uh, for you to see and more cabs to pick up as well. So many cabs I've been picking up. So guys, you better stay tuned because it's all happening. <laughs> it's all happening. Um, but before we go, I've got to mention it's in Stroud because I forgot to mention that last time. It's in Stroud in the Cotswolds, a beautiful part of the world. Um, sort of, it's not middle England, but it's sort of somewhere in the middle. So hopefully all of you can come down. But also, um, when you come down, you're going to have to beat my scores because I'm quite competitive, guys. So every arcade cabinet, I'm going to have my score on. <laughs> now, I'm not great at every game, but there will be a lot of games there that I would like you to challenge me to, and that'd be the, that's the thing with the museum as well. It's going to be a, high, a place where you can put your high score, and we'll have a high score table. That you know, that's one of the other things I want to achieve with this place: make it competitive. Because I love, I love all that. A lot of bit of competition. So yeah, so we've got all that to come. I've got to say a thank you to Rich, who does all my music. Guys, if you like the music for this channel, go over and check. Uh, well, you can go and buy all the music. It'll be in the link in the video below. All the music that I've had on my channel throughout the years has been done by Rich. He is actually the world champion at Championship Sprint. He's a good friend of mine. Um, go and check his music out. It's absolutely brilliant. It really is. It's called the Zero Hour, the album. Fantastic album. If you like synthwave sort of music, it's, it's fantastic. So go and check that out. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.